In this video, we're going to talk about all the basic tools. There are six tools to work with inside Pro Tools. And we're going to discuss each one of these and their modifiers. So there's a lot of information in this video. Please take the time to review and watch this video multiple times if you need to. So the first tool we're going to talk about is the Zoom tool. The Zoom tool is very easy to zoom in on area. And I can hold the Option key to zoom back right out. Now, if I hold down the Command key, I can zoom both vertically and horizontally at the same time, and then use the Option key to zoom right back out. So you can almost think of this just like how a PDF works. So if you think about how the Zoom tool works inside Acrobat Reader, that might be helpful. Now, there's another modifier. If you hold down the Control key, you can zoom up and down horizontally. Or if I let go and hold down the Control key and click left and right, I can zoom left and right. Now the Trim tool has some modifiers as well. I can go in and trim on this region any way I want. I can hit the Z key to undo that. I can also hold down the Option key to change its direction. So instead of having to click all the way over to this point, I can simply just hold down the Option key and click there. Notice what happens as I move my Trim tool right at the halfway point. It automatically switches direction. So this is why you can simply put it right here, hold the Option, and you can flip its direction very quickly and make the trim. Now you can also use the Shift key with the Trim tool. So right now we have this region selected, so if I hold the Shift key down and click here, I'm trimming both regions at the same time. Very helpful. Notice that I cannot do that with this region because it's at a different time and different separation, so that gets a little confusing. So let's talk about the selector tool. The selector tool has a lot of functions. It's probably one of the most used tools. So I can select any time or data, and I can select across multiple tracks very easily. Or I can highlight an area and hold the Shift key to select non-adjacent tracks. Very, very useful. Now once it's selected, I can grab these blue arrows and move them left and right very quickly. But otherwise, I can hold the Shift key and do the exact same thing to add or take away from my selection. Think of how the Shift key works inside any other application, just adding or taking away from a selection of words in a paragraph or Excel grids, whatever you're working in. So the very common behavior here. Now, if you double click with the Selector tool, it highlights a region. But if you triple click, then you select all regions at once in that track. So let's go ahead and zoom out on this. I'm going to go ahead and control and zoom out. And you can see the entire set of regions are selected. So if I go in here and triple click on this, and then I hold the Shift key and triple click on here, it just adds to that selection. Or if I triple click here, and then I hold the Shift key and triple click here, it adds to that selection as well. So some very unique behavior with the Shift key. Now let's talk about the Grabber tool. The Grabber tool allows us to grab and select data and all time in between. So if I select this and hold the Shift key, I can move it around. I can also hold the Option key down and make a copy of it and place it somewhere else. Pretty cool. Now I can also take and double click on it and rename the regions. Very cool way of renaming uh, data in a track. Now I can rename things very simple by double clicking in the regions list as well. But notice that I don't have to be in the grabber tool. I could be in the selector tool and do the same thing by double clicking. So the regions list is not dependent upon my tools. I can just simply double click anywhere I want to rename the regions. I do want to point out this naming region here has some unique features. This is a bold drums file. So this is the main disk file in my audio files folder. And I have the ability to rename the file on my hard drive. I don't recommend that because if you are using that file for another session, well then that session file has to be updated with that file name as well. So you may end up having offline media for the other sessions are using it. So remember what I said when we import audio, we always want to copy so that it's self-contained and it's only working for that session only. So if that's the case, it's been copied and only the session is using it, then you can rename the disk file. But any other save as sessions that you do that do not have that name uh, in the actual .ptf file, 
it will show up as an offline media. So this is why I really don't like messing with the disk file because you can mess up save as sessions or sessions that are referencing that file. So using the region name is like an alias. It stores the name only in the .ptf file and that's it. So it's only self-contained in the session and that's the only location it needs to work with. So let's escape out of that. Now I want to talk about the scrubber tool. The scrubber tool allows us to scrub data. Right, we can scrub this. And notice that I can scrub the left side or the right side. Or if I put my, my scrub right in the middle, I can do both sides. All right. Now I can also hold down the option key and I can actually scrub faster. And all I'm doing is just changing how fast I'm moving my mouse. If I move it faster, I can speed up the scrub. This is called Scrub Shuttle. And if you're working on a control surface, you'll use a jog wheel to do the same function. But with a QWERTY keyboard, you can just simply hold down the Option key to get this Scrub Shuttle option. Now I can also scrub between two adjacent tracks. So let's unmute this track right now. And I can scrub between both these tracks and this is only because I have my scrubber tool between the two tracks. But if I do it in here, it only does it to the base or only to this particular track. So pretty cool way of referencing two tracks when you're scrubbing. But notice I cannot scrub across all tracks in the session. I can only do it to adjacent tracks, whether they're stereo or there's the tracks are together. For example, this right here. Now there's also a great preference that you want to watch out for with the scrub tool. If you go into your preferences, you can go into the operations tab. There's a feature that says edit insertion follows your scrub shuttle. In Pro Tools, we call this location point where it's blinking. That's our edit insertion point. So this is what we have in our clipboard. We can paste in by using the V key or we can use the B key to separate, for example. But right now, if I make a selection, it's no longer called an edit insertion. It's just simply called a selection. So if I have my edit insertion point set with my scrub tool right here, and I scrub it left and right, notice how my edit insertion follows where my scrub is at. If you go into your preferences, though, and you set this to not follow, then you got unique behavior. I can, tr I can scrub this area but my edit insertion is still over here. So I prefer to like to have my edit insertion follow my scrub location. So anytime I scrub an area, my edit insertion is right there. So you're gonna use the scrub tool quite a bit for like finding pops or snaps or unusual noises in audio that you're trying to remove. Uh, very useful for vocals. Now let's go into the pencil tool. The pencil tool has a lot of unique behavior as well. I can go in and zoom in right in on the waveform. And notice as I zoom out, my pencil tool is gray, but right when I get to a certain point and zooming in, my pencil tool is active and I actually can redraw the waveform. And this is pretty scary. You're actually rewriting the file on the hard drive. So what this is good for is if you have a really nasty pop or snap, that's a really short period of time, you can redraw the waveform and clean it up. So let's say I clean this up by rewriting the waves. So I find that this is sometimes very difficult to work with. Um, you're not going to get very satisfying results. You're actually going to be better off if you highlight the materia with your selector tool and delete it and remove it and then probably do some crossfades or find material that's somewhere else in the session that is very similar to replace. So you may find the pencil tool very useful for pops and snaps, but if you got a large clipped area that was recorded way too hot and you're trying to round out those squared edges, you're probably going to be better off actually selecting data somewhere else and copying it and pasting it in. Now the pencil tool can be used for drawing in automation, it can be used for drawing in MIDI notes, all kinds of information, and we will discuss the pencil tool in much further detail later on in the month. But for right now, uh, you can see that the pencil tool has a lot of unique behavior for redrawing waveforms. So be careful about that. So this uh, concludes the six tools, but I want to talk about an another tool here, which is the smart tool. 
the smart tool is by clicking in this area right here and now I can select at the top I can grab at the bottom I can trim on my edges and it automatically does this for me I'm not holding down any modifiers I can also go to the top left and do a fade in or top right and do a fade out I can even double click on these fades to change the settings very very cool I can trim my fades I can go ahead and say I want this to be an equal power as well. So we'll get into all these different options in more detail later on. I can delete my fades, highlight them, delete them. I can option drag this, make a copy. I can select this information, hit the C key, click over here to paste it. There's a lot of cool things we can do with this smart tool. Very, very fast way of editing. But I want to point out the difficulties of the smart tools when you have your track at too small of a height. If it's at micro, then you can't hardly set your selector or your grabber, and I just don't recommend working with very small heights. So control up arrow, get that track up into a decent height, and you can see you can definitely work with it the way you want. So now let's talk about the shortcuts for these tools. These are very powerful shortcuts that you need to take advantage of. If you hold down Command QWERTY 1, then go through 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then QWERTY 7. So I'm holding down the Command key the entire time, and I can just simply switch between all these individual tools. So get really comfortable at being able to do that. I want to see you guys use that efficiency on the uh, screen captures. I want to see that you guys are getting very comfortable at being able to switch between your tools and not using your mouse. That's something I'm really going to look forward to uh, watching you guys know how to work inside Pro Tools. So please take advantage of that. Again, that's Command and holding down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then going into 7 for the Smart Tool. But in reality, there's only six tools. Okay, So don't think of the Smart Tool as its own tool. It's really a combination of tools. So this concludes all the different tools and their modifiers. Please review this video several times and make sure you're very comfortable with all the different modifiers that can be used and methods for working with these tools. I think you'll find this video very, very helpful for sessions to come.